Today is a special Sunday. Uh, the fourth Sunday of Easter is always Good Shepherd Sunday. So who do we have there? Jesus. You think that's a Jesus? It's a shepherd, for sure. I think Jesus, Jesus is our shepherd, so you're making some quick leaps for me, Lemuel. I really appreciate it. Um, are we done? Did everybody get their money? Oh, we got one more. Thank you. So today is Good Shepherd. What does a shepherd do? A shepherd takes care of his flock of sheep. Take care of sheep. Same thing. How, do, how does the shepherd take care of the sheep? Feed the sheep. They herd them. Make sure they have a safe place to stay, right? Well, today we're, we're going we're gonna to do an obstacle course. Okay, so do I have a volunteer to do the obstacle course? All right, Brooklyn. Okay. Now, Brooklyn, if you'll come stand out here. Um, the obstacle course, you're going to be blindfolded. So. So. You're going to have 20 seconds. You have to go around the cones and under the string and through the hula hoop um, without, listen Brooklyn, without running, okay? Okay, so on your mark, get set, go. <laughs> How do you guys think he's doing? Does this seem like it's pretty hard for him? Okay. Okay, Brooklyn, you can take off your blindfold and come back normally. You can come back the other way. Now, Brooklyn, that was kind of hard to do on your own, wasn't it? How, what would make it easier if I said you still had to be blindfolded? Um, someone has to be guiding me. Oh, you want someone to guide you. Well, you want to pick two people to help you? No, I want to be Okay. okay, so you're trusting your brother and Malik to guide you through the obstacle course. Yeah, they're my friends. They're, they're your friends. Okay. Now, so why don't, boys, why don't y'all get on one side of him, okay? And you can hold his hand if you need to, but no running. You have 20 seconds to complete the obstacle course. Ready? Go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Nicely done, guys. All right. All right. There you go. And he's running unblindfolded back. Well, I'll tell you what. After church, if the youth are willing to, to reset it up, we can all run the obstacle course, okay? But right now, we're going to think about what we just learned because I know that was fun, but I hope you learned something too. So this morning, we're going to hear that God is like a shepherd, okay? That God guides us and protects us and does all those things we imagine shepherds do. But still, sometimes in life, we try to go through obstacle courses on our own. And what made it so much easier, Brooklyn? Help! And that God has offered to guide us. If we listen to God's voice, did you listen for their voices, Brooklyn, telling you what to do? And felt their hands guiding you? that God is going to do that for us and we can trust God to guide our path and take us the right ways and not run us into a pew or, or take us outside, right? You trusted them, Brooklyn, to not take you outside? Yeah. Well, good. Well, let's say an echo prayer of thanksgiving to God. Dear God, thank you for being our shepherd. Please guide us and protect us and help us as we go through life together. Help us tell others about our Good Shepherd. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys very much.
Our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel of John chapter 10 verses 11 through 18. Listen to this. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I am know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. We are given many good gifts in life. If our scripture readings this morning weren't confirmation enough, let me tell you about the latest gift I got. Early in March, a son of this congregation asked if he could preach in worship on April 12th, the Sunday after Easter. And what a gift it was to have John Pitzer here so I could confirm all the raving reviews I'd heard about him. And then as previously planned, I headed off to part two of a clergy wellness conference for a week of learning and stretching and growing and self-reflection and accountability. In my absence, a daughter of this congregation preached on the cloud of witnesses and letting people be Ruth to us. What a gift and what a testament to Westminster as you have raised, nurtured, and encouraged John Pitzer and Claire Kennedy. Truly, they are sheep who point to our good shepherd and who know our shepherd's voice. It also feels appropriate to rejoice in their leadership in the season of Easter, Lest you think Easter is only one day, we are currently on Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday of the Easter season, which lasts 50 days and ends with Pentecost. It's important that Easter lasts longer than the somber season of Lent, for death has been defeated and we can rejoice again. He is risen! He is risen indeed! You guys do know it's still Easter. Father John, two weeks ago, reassured us that we can choose to live out of love rather than fear because of our risen Lord. Claire reminded us that God calls us to love each other recklessly. Rejoicing in love and in our cloud of witnesses, we today rejoice in the identity of who leads us and who that means we are. According to the Scriptures today, we are a flock of sheep called to follow the voice of the Good Shepherd. Growing up in bustling Arlington, I never had much experience with sheep in real life. My understanding was that sheep are dumb animals who don't think for themselves. It seemed to be a family motto in my house to not be a sheep, to think for myself and stand out for the pack. So imagine my surprise when I took a youth group on a mission trip to Heifer Ranch and finally got the 
opportunity to herd sheep. Our job was get, to get the sheep from point A to point B so they could enjoy some grazing in a green pasture. I was all prepared to run at them from behind and make noises at them to get, to move, get them to move. But then they asked the youth to take the lead, to go out in front of the sheep. Several of our youth and the heifer ranch leaders ran up that dusty road and the sheep shockingly began to follow. Now, I'm still not convinced that sheep are the smartest animals, and I still slightly bristle at the fact of being called a sheep. But there is something powerful about sheep preferring to be led rather than driven from behind. Being led by a shepherd they trust, by a shepherd who calls them and knows them, a shepherd who lays down his life for them. And there is something powerful about the community of a flock of sheep. That whether in darkest valleys or green pastures, they are in it together. In the previous chapter in John's Gospel, Jesus heals a blind man in direct contrast to and conflict with the religious authorities who then drive the healed man out of their community. In response to that event, Jesus describes Himself as the Good Shepherd the one who restores sight to the blind, who rescues the lost, who frees the oppressed, who protects those in danger, who guides the flock down the right path to green pastures and still waters. And this is good news for those who have ever felt lost or unsure or alone. For anyone who has felt a little sheepish at times. The good news is that if you're feeling lost, you're not alone. If you're feeling unsure of what lies ahead, you're not alone. If you're worried that you can't make it up this hill, you're not alone. If you're hungry for the bread of life and thirsty for the living water, you are not alone. For we are in this life together as a flock. One of my fellow pastors told me that if sheep end up alone... They die in a matter of days. Sheep were made to be in community, to be on this journey together as we followed our shepherd who is the way, the truth, and the life. When we're not sure about the path, we have others here to guide our way. When we're not sure how just to follow the good shepherd, we can listen for his voice and look to the rest of the flock. Along those lines, American author Thomas Merton penned this powerful prayer that echoes Psalm 23. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Even in the light of the resurrection, we still don't always know where we are going, but we are not alone. As we look to the road ahead of us, we don't have to see the destination because God is is leading us through the obstacle course. God is leading us on the right paths. Our Good Shepherd is calling us by name to follow Him. As John quotes Jesus, we hear that our Shepherd is no hired hand who is only in it for the money, who will run at the first sign of danger. Our Shepherd in Jesus Christ is one who is with us through the ups and the downs, who will take on pain so that we don't have to. 
As Easter people, we hear these words of Jesus testifying to what has happened. That he has laid down his life and picked it up again, defeating sin and death. And that the mission of God the Father and God the Son and God the Spirit is truly one. Some of the last words we hear from Jesus this morning emphasize the unity of our flock. That we have one shepherd and that we, in fact, are one flock. And so along those lines, I'm excited to share with you an opportunity to show that Christian unity to the rest of Arlington. In conjunction with the Dallas Cowboys and AISD, the churches of Arlington are banding together in August for a back-to-school fair at the AT&T Stadium. The churches are in charge of providing backpacks with school supplies for 15,000 students in need. And we're calling it Operation Excel. With a low-cost supplier, we can get filled backpacks for $20 each. But still, for any church on their own, that number seems insurmountable. 15,000 backpacks is still $300,000 even at that bargain price. But by partnering together... By flocking together as sheep, we can take the step of faith and trust in our Good Shepherd. We will flock together with Fielder Church, Tate Springs Baptist, the Church on Rush Creek, Trinity United Methodist, and many other churches across Arlington so that these students and their families may know the love of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd who welcomes the lost and the least to His flock. Our Mission and Evangelism Committee set our goal at $2,000 or 100 backpacks as our part of commitment to this sheepish task. With money from the mission budget, part of the Pentecost offering, and direct donations, we are hoping that we can help others hear the Good Shepherd's voice, calling them to the one who lays down his life for them. As Thomas Merton prays, We cannot see the road ahead. We don't know what speed bumps might appear along the way as the churches of Arlington participate in our first Operation Excel event. And according to Pastor Gary Smith at Fielder Church, the first event of this kind for the churches in Arlington. And we don't know right now if we will have enough funding for all 15,000 backpacks. But in our own sheepish way, we are trusting God to provide We are trusting God to guide us as one flock instead of 30, to help look past our theological differences and practices for the sake of unity. By joining together in one flock, by rejoicing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the triumph over sin and death, by following Jesus to reach out to the least of these, we join in God's redemptive mission for humanity. In the words of 1 John that we heard Linda read, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's good and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? The need is actually 48,000 backpacks. And we are starting with 15. And God's love will abide in us as we share from our abundance of gifts which we have been given through Operation Excel. For our shepherd shows us the path of sacrificial giving. Our shepherd leads us down a path that will go through the darkest valley, the valley of death. And the path is not easy. But we have a shepherd who has laid down his life for us in love. We have a shepherd who will guide us and protect us, who will not abandon us in those dark valleys, but instead will lead us to the light, toward a place where we all have enough, where a feast is set for us. Following our Good Shepherd means we will not merely survive, but we will triumph. In the face of our enemies of sin and death, we will find new life, and our cup will overflow with so much goodness. And we will sit at this table as one flock, rejoicing in our one shepherd who has called us and claimed us as his sheep, 
who has defined the relationship with us by giving up his life for us. So knowing that we are part of the flock of the Good Shepherd, how will we respond? Knowing that we are not alone, that together we can be the hands and feet of Christ right here in Arlington, how will you live your life? Are you willing to take this step of faith with me, trusting our Good Shepherd to bring the churches of Arlington together in one flock? Are you willing to trust in the Good Shepherd to unite Presbyterians and Baptists, Methodists, and non-denominational Christians for the sake of kids in need? And where else in your life do you need to trust God as our Shepherd? Do you have times when you feel that you have to do it all on your own, blindfolded? The good news we hear from the Gospel of John this morning is that we are in this together. We are one flock, the flock of the Good Shepherd, having that trust and faith in Jesus Christ, being claimed in His name and walking His path with His other sheep all as one flock. Well, that's the kind of sheep I'm excited to be. And that's the kind of sheep I know you can be. May we all be lucky to be so sheepish. Amen.